Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools, where we help everyday folks leverage third-party tools and applications to supercharge their workflows. Now, in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Airtable API and how you can iterate through all the objects to put it into a Google Sheet without having to specify each field that you want to input. It's gonna be really helpful if you have a lot of columns and you don't wanna type each one out. That could be a pain, but this way is going to be a lot faster. It's going to save you a lot of headache, but let's go ahead and dive right into it. All right. So up on the screen, we have some previous code that we wrote uh, to handle pagination with the Airtable API. If you haven't checked out that video yet, find this link up over here, up on the top, right? Go ahead and click through to that and watch that video so that you can follow along as we go through all this data. You don't have to, but it would be helpful since we will be using this code. Now, so what we're doing here today is instead of typing out every single field that we want to grab from our data set in Airtable, we're going to use an iterator to go through every single field and just automatically update that so that we don't have to write all each and every individual field by itself. Within our table uh, data set, we have a lot of columns, so it is painful if you wanted to grab everything. So this is going to be a really good way for us to decrease the amount of repeated effort and still grab all the data that we want with automation. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just remove this set of code over here, and we're going to replace that with a new for loop. So we're going to say for let item in data this is a new way of doing a for loop. It's uh, similar. It's going to do the same thing as what we had before with the I iterator. Uh, we're just going to go through it without having to state how long the data length is. And so first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare field data. So we're going to do const field underscore data equals an open array. And the reason we're doing this is so that we can put uh, all of the fields into an array and then shove that into the sheet data. Uh, array so that it's a nested array. If you remember for Google Sheets, you need to do nested arrays to represent the columns and the individual rows. So once we have that, we're also going to set the fields within our API response to a variable called fields. I'm going to set that to data, open bracket, close bracket, item dot fields. And once we have that, we're going to create another for loop so that we can iterate through all the fields that are available. We're just going to call this field in fields nice and verbose. And then within here, we're going to say field data dot push fields and field. So this is going to iterate through every single field that we have within the fields uh, object in the API response and then push that in. Before we close this out, let's go ahead and actually comment this code out because we don't want to write anything into the spreadsheet just yet. And what we're going to do is we're going to say console.log I'm going to say field data so that we can show off what that data set looks like. So let's go ahead and put a uh, debugger over here. That's you can do that easily by just clicking to the left side of the row that you want to update. And then we'll just hit the debug button up here. What that's going to do is going to open up a tray on the side. And as that runs, it's going to run through all the data. And then it's going to display the different objects that we have available to us uh, on the left hand side. So it looks like we have a bunch of data in here. And if we step over it, field data is not defined. So let's see, field data is up here. We're doing it down here. And what we want to do is put it this console statement up a line above. Okay, that's better. It's going to run this again. Debug. So now that we have this data intact, we're going to take a look at the field data. We'll see that within the array, we have all the elements that we want. So this is just giving us all the bit, little bits of data that we need. And we also notice that there are some um, uh, arrays within there, which we'll handle in a little bit here. So notice how we don't have a header row. That's something that we're going to want to place in there. So what we're going to do is within our for loops, we're going to identify uh, what the iteration is and then add in the header row. So underneath of the field data, let's go put an if statement here. And then we're going to say item equals zero for the first iteration. And if it is that, we're going to say field data dot 
push Airtable ID. Else, we're just going to put in the Airtable ID since it's not coming through in the fields itself. I'm going to say field data dot push. I'm going to say field. No, I'm going to say data. I'm going to say open bracket item dot ID. And that's going to give us the Airtable ID in the beginning of our field data. And then within our next for loop, we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to do if item equals zero, then go ahead and push into the field data array, the field. And else, we're just going to push in this part right here. So we'll cut that and paste it into our else statement. It's going to be field to field. So let's go ahead and stop the debugger and run a debug on this again. And so within our field data, the first uh, pass through of it gives us all the titles or the column headers that we want. So your table ID, order ID, order date, all that jazz. And then we will go through this one more time. And then now we see that the next iteration, so when item equals one, so that's down here, this is the second iteration through the loop. We can see that all the records are coming through with their respective columns. All right, so now that we have this, what we can do is we can shove this into the data set. So let's go ahead and uncomment out this code that we have on the bottom. And then right above that, let's make sure to push in our field data into our sheet data. So sheet data dot push field data. That's basically all we need to do. So now what this is going to go through is it's going to go through all the data that we grab from the API. It's going to set the Airtable ID to the first position in our row. And if it is a header row, it's going to put in the header columns and then it's going to go through the fields and then push in those data, uh, those data points into the positions after the initial Airtable ID one. And then it's going to take all of that and then push it into the sheet data uh, array as a row. And it's going to do that for every single row or, or piece of data that we found in the API. So before we run this, let's quickly go over to our Google sheet where we have sheet one, where it's the previous one where we were actually identifying or declaring each individual variable. So what's going to happen when we run this code is that it's going to replace all this data with the additional columns that we want. It's going to run this, hit the run button, and execution completed. When we go back here, we can see that data has been refreshed and includes all the columns that we wanted uh, from the Airtable base. That includes any column that we want. And as people add in additional columns, is this going to go ahead and add it to the end of the data set? So that's how you're going to iterate through the Airtable response to grab all the data fields. Just remember that we're using a for loop within the loop in order to iterate through each and every single uh, object that's coming through the API so that you can push that into a data array, which then you will use to import into your Google Sheet as an individual row. Now, to level up your Airtable data, make sure to check out this video over here where we show you how to use pagination so that you can grab more than 100 rows at a time since there are limitations with the Airtable API. But I'm a guy called Joe. This is Bootstrapping Tools. It's been a pleasure, and we're out.